ransomware attacks. Massive ransomware attack. Ransomware attack. Ransomware is one of the most serious threats a business or individual can face online. By holding a government or company's information at ransom, a black hat hacker can make a fortune overnight. Ransomware is a threat to everyone from large organizations to your town's local high school. And in this episode of Hack 5, we're going to explore how organizations who are hit by ransomware can survive and how businesses have survived their own ransomware event. Originally, ransomware attacks involved hackers breaking into a company, stealing data, and attempting to sell it online. But unfortunately, Black Hat hackers have figured out that this data is often most valuable to the companies that rely on it. Now, ransomware has become increasingly popular for hackers wanting to make money fast, because unfortunately, companies often pay the ransom in order to secure access to their critical data. The first ransomware attack was perpetrated in 1989, when a biologist mailed out 20,000 floppy disks containing a ransomware program. When the victims inserted the floppy disk into their computer, it immediately locked up, demanding $200 in order to access the files on the computer. Nowadays, cybercriminals don't need physical access to your computer in order to infect them with ransomware. It's likely your network is available from anywhere in the world, and if it's vulnerable or if you're running vulnerable software, it's easy to become the victim of a ransomware attack. In 2020 alone, there are over 30 million ransomware attacks, causing businesses to lose time and money while recovering. While organizations like police agencies and hospitals that rely on databases to function are often the targets of ransomware attacks, smaller local organizations can be victims as well. In 2017, the small town of Columbia Falls, Montana, had its high school fall victim to a ransomware attack. Aside from demanding $150,000 in order to give back access to the information, the hackers watched over the school's security cameras and threatened to release the social security numbers of victims. So how do hackers do this, and what can companies do to counteract a ransomware attack? Organizations know that there are multiple facets when dealing with ransomware attacks. At the end of the day, the attackers will target the data that the organizations hold to ransom it back to them. One of the key strategies that they've been implementing over the last few years is really strong backup processes, making sure that the data is backed up ideally to an air gap network or using technology where it has continuous snapshots that are immutable. This is a really easy way for them to try and recover as quickly as they can if data gets encrypted. They have additional challenges though to overcome. They'll still lose money and revenue from the loss of operations during that time, but a strong backup process is a way for them to get going as fast as possible. There have even been some instances where organizations have paid the ransom to attackers and still relied on their backups because recovering from their storage and their backups was actually faster than decrypting the files. However, even with a strong backup process in place, the attackers need to make sure that they increase their conversion rate and get paid. So what they've been doing lately is taking into account that backups will be there. So they've been finding and exfiltrating sensitive data outside of organizations. That way, if the company tries to restore from backup, the attackers still have a copy of the data that they can threaten to disclose publicly or online to get the organizations to pay. There are two main routes a hacker can take to load ransomware onto a victim's computer. The first is through the internet, whereas the second might be more physical, like this USB stick, which a hacker might drop a whole bunch of in a parking lot, hoping that someone will pick it up and plug it into their computer. Now, typically, a ransomware attack will take place over the internet, where a victim might become infected by going to a sketchy website, opening an infected file, or maybe falling victim to a phishing attack. In one notable incident, a transportation logistics business ended up infecting dozens of its customers after a single employee opened a phishing email which caused a ransomware attack. This ransomware attack also spread to all of its customers, who it never bothered to inform were under attack. 
and because of this, many opened the files that were attached, which appeared to be billing invoices that seemed perfectly legitimate and were infected themselves. Organizations have been defending their perimeters and their endpoints from various threats over the years with all sorts of technology. Of course, most organizations have strong defenses at the endpoint, monitoring for signs of malicious files or malicious applications, and they'll also monitor key infiltration points like email. However, smart attackers know that businesses defend their corporate assets in this way. So they've taken steps to try and avoid this type of detection. They can do it in very simple ways by breaking up their malicious installer into multiple pieces and loading them separately to try and avoid the traditional detection. They also do a little bit of research about the organizations and change up the types of malware they use to avoid, again, traditional, typical endpoint detection. Sophisticated attackers realize that organizations will take steps to defend their assets. So what the attackers have started to do is try to completely skip having to interact with organization-owned devices. They've taken steps like connecting directly through corporate VPNs with stolen credentials or compromising devices that provide access within the organizations, but the organizations don't control, something called a supply chain attack. One of my good colleagues just told me a really interesting ransomware near miss that he experienced with one of his customers. In this particular instance, the customer had been alerted to the fact that attackers were inside the organization when the attackers tried to move around and map out what types of resources that customer had. When we did our investigation, we discovered the attacker had compromised an external third-party organization's accounts through a phishing attack. The attackers then used those third-party accounts to connect to the corporate environment and go after their ultimate goal of finding and stealing data. Luckily, we were monitoring in the right places and we saw the attempts the attackers made to find the devices storing the juicy data. At that point, we were able to shut them down and lock them out of the organization. Now, the attackers had done something a little bit smart when going through the initial infiltration phase. They had only used a small subset of the accounts they initially compromised. So they had some in reserve that they hadn't used in that initial attempt. However, the attackers were pretty frustrated that their first attempt was shut down so quickly. So they decided instead of trying to find and steal and exfiltrate sensitive data, they were simply going to drop ransomware and try and encrypt everything they could to get paid. However, because we knew that they had been there in the past and we had been monitoring the correct resources, we were able to spot that drop of ransomware as it kicked off and locked the attackers out before they were able to encrypt much data. After initially infecting a single computer, ransomware will typically look around for a more escalated privileged account, such as a server or a admin, in order to cause the maximum possible damage. After the ransomware is able to escalate privileges and can access the most amount of files, it will then activate and encrypt everything it has access to. At this point, the victim will typically see a warning on the screen telling them that all their files have been encrypted and demanding money in order to gain access to them. Sometimes, hackers will also include a countdown to try to force victims to pay up more quickly, either by giving them a discount if they pay fast or by threatening to delete all their files if they don't pay by a certain date. But don't worry, hackers are heavily incentivized to make sure that you can pay them. So they include detailed instructions to guide even non-tech savvy people into sending their first Bitcoin payment. Most big organizations take a very specific mindset when dealing with attackers. They have what's called an assumed breach mentality, meaning that they assume that at some point, attackers will get inside their organization, but that's all part of the plan. What they do to mitigate this is implement a defense in-depth strategy, meaning they have multiple layers of controls throughout their organization that can spot signs of an attacker 
and stop them before they reach their ultimate goal. While there are many different ransomware groups and attackers out there, organizations know that attackers are always after the same thing, the juicy data that the businesses are storing. Attackers might have different playbooks and different tools that they use to move around the environment, but the businesses know the end goal is always going to be the same. The businesses have that advantage to know what they need to really defend, and that's the data. If the hackers receive their ransomware payment in Bitcoin, then the first thing they'll do is attempt to hide it by doing something called Bitcoin tumbling. This involves sending their Bitcoin to hundreds or thousands of different Bitcoin wallets in order to do something very similar to money laundering. Now, this makes it very difficult to follow the trail of money for anyone who's attempting to investigate this crime. This is probably the hardest part of ransomware, getting away scot-free, because now the hacker probably has a very angry company and the FBI on their tail. While it may be tempting for businesses simply to pay the ransom to get their data back, there are a number of different issues that they could still face. First, the FBI strongly advises against paying the ransom. This simply encourages more ransomware behavior. Second, there's no guarantee the business will get their data back if they pay. Third, the United States Office of Foreign Asset Control can sanction ransomware organizations. So if a business pays ransom to one of these sanctioned entities, the business could open themselves up legal scrutiny from the United States government. Thank you, Killian, for sharing some examples of what companies do when they become victims of ransomware attacks and how to prevent yourself from becoming a victim. While ransomware attacks are serious, it's easy to prevent yourself from becoming the victim of a ransomware attack. First, make sure to not open up any sketchy email attachments. And second, make sure to not plug in any random USB devices that you might find. Also, make sure to keep the software on your computer up to date, as these are the most common ways that victims are infected by ransomware. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave us a like, and if you have any suggestions for upcoming episodes, you can leave them on the video in the comments below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.